Hi everyone, my name is Mike Henry, and this is my Procreate demo for the piece I call Bigfoot Chase. Now you'll notice I didn't say which version of Procreate, that's because this was done so long ago that I don't remember which version of Procreate I did it in. This was done for Strange Times, which is a property developed by Tom DeLong of Blink-182 and Angels and Airwaves fame. He's been doing a lot of different uh, IP development things and properties and stuff that he wants to take and do more with, and this has been recently announced that it's in development at TBS, so I thought it would be cool to share some of the earlier development stuff. Um, I've actually done, uh, I did like the original design for these characters a long time ago and when Tom contacted me about doing these a long time ago um, he said that he had three pieces that he wanted done and he described them and this is the first of the three. I'll actually do a Procreate demo of all three um, but I wanted to start with this one because it was actually the first one that I did. So Strange Times uh, loosely just to describe it involves a bunch of kids that are encountering a bunch of um, myths and legends and, and sci-fi things and all that kind of stuff. It's like taking uh, uh, Goonies and mixing it with uh, X-Files or something like that. That'd be a fairly apt uh, description. So um, Bigfoot, of course, is one of those classic fun things to mess around with, and the idea of the kids encountering Bigfoot uh, can be uh, really fun and funny. So uh, that's what you got here, basically just they've come in contact with him and he's not so happy to see them. That was essentially the description that I was given, um, and then I just sort of went at it. What you saw in the beginning here was a very loose rough that I just used and sent it over to Tom and said, hey, something like this, and he said, yep. So I proceeded with it. I already had the designs of the kids um, but this was actually a new design for the Bigfoot that I had not done previously so he was just sort of designed in the scene uh, as you can see once the rough was done move into tight lines which of course you've seen me do this process in the past Something that's interesting is I do backgrounds and I do environment work, uh, especially professionally, not so much for fun on this channel, though I'm sure many of you would say I should do more because it would be interesting to see, um, but I don't enjoy it as much as character work. So when I do a scene like this, I try to focus on the environment first if possible because it's sort of like eating my vegetables. I want to get it done so that I can then move on to the stuff that I find more enjoyable. There are of course times where a background is way more stylized you have more character in it and thus a character artist like myself finds a lot more that I can hold on to and really dig into uh, but in this case I didn't want the background to be too distracting from what's going on the main focus of this of course is supposed to be the characters being chased by Bigfoot and the background is in this case merely a setting for that so uh, as we're moving through the background, there's really not much more to say. This part is just about doing it. Um, since the grass has a little bit of detail in there, I'm, you know, a lot of the time here is eaten up by me detailing that grass. Uh, and of course, you're gonna hear me say, how did I do it? What brush did I use for it? It's the fat pencil, which is linked in the comments below. I'm always talking about the fat pencil and I'm always talking about how simple and versatile it is. And that's what I'm using in this. I used it sized up for the rough and I used it sized down to get the finer detail in the lines. So now that the background line art is done, I'm going to move on to the Yeti or the Bigfoot. I mean Yeti, Bigfoot, it's sort of uh, interchangeable, although I'm sure some uh, specific fans would say that it's not interchangeable. The big thing that I wanted to do here was a long time ago I did a Bigfoot design for this property and it was a little bit more on the serious side and the IP has gone uh, as it's developed over all the years it's gone to a little bit more of a funny uh, angle so I needed to come up with a new funny Bigfoot. Um, I didn't want the Bigfoot to be a character so that's why you see that his eyes are still kind of dead they're kind of animalistic as opposed to being like the kids where they have these big expressive eyes that's on purpose I wanted to keep him uh, still animalistic not dumb although yes a little bit on the dumb side as far as his appearance goes and I wanted to find a funny shape for him so that's why we went with like his little tummy that doesn't have any fur on it and then this big curved this big back curve that leads into his, his big ass face um, that I just wanted to make sure was there he's obviously Bigfoot so he's got to have big feet but I wanted to try and find a version of Bigfoot that I just didn't see regularly he's not the most inventive Bigfoot ever um, but he's different than what I see most of the time at least that's what I was going for uh, when I get to finalizing his feet and all that of course I have to make sure that he has 
the big feet, otherwise what's the point, right? Um, also, you can see in the rough sketch, he's just naked, basically, but I thought it'd be really fun to have him, like, he's just out for his morning jog. Uh, he's got a life, he's more or less normal, however, he's a Bigfoot. So that's why when we eventually get to that part, uh, we throw some little running shorts on him and a headband, and uh, there you go. And then by going with the headband idea, it gave me the opportunity to do that shape that sometimes happens where in like simian characters, where you've got this little like a uh, little skull square, this little skull wedge part that kind of goes upward. And I thought that'd be a perfect opportunity to wrap a headband around it. So that's why we've got uh, that going on up there, which overall I think gives him a pretty interesting look. And uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's basically it. That was the thought process around his design. Again, since he was designed for the page, he was designed for this express purpose to cut a really interesting silhouette as well as to be funny. Um, and then, uh, and so that funniness is communicated both through his costuming and through his overall shape and expression. I mean, sort of any time you've got a character who looks like the natural sound they're making, it's just like, Rah! you know, like that's pretty fucking funny. That's why, like, I... It's very hard for me to take Chewbacca seriously because he's always making that kind of a sound. So the rest of this part here is just uh, me doing the lines. So I'm going to shut up while the lines on this character finishes and then we'll get down to the kids.
that's pretty interesting to mention here as you can see he's got these big feet and these legs that I'm sketching in here but it's not as funny he's more proportional by giving him those bigger legs so you can see here then in the rough I shrink it down so he still has feet that are large proportionally to his legs um, but his whole upper body comes down into this really sort of small lower portion which compared to a human still gives him big feet uh, but he is overall much bigger on the top side of him. After we get the legs done here, I actually don't move directly to the kids. I start working on some of the background, get those trees that are in, that are implied through the rough sketch in there uh, so that we can start working on being conscious of uh, tangents and just how the whole thing is uh, coming together is the, is the composition actually working out. Now you're going to see the super thin line sort of pop in for the trees when we get to them. I think that's because this was an era when Procreate was kind of crashing a bit um, and when it crashed it would lose little bits. Of, it would keep all your actual artwork but it would lose little bits of the recording. Um, so you can see real quick I drew with a really thin line in there the trees that I wanted. Um, that was just to guide the general shapes and then I went back in and actually refined that line a bit more. Um, but trying to keep them still uh, thin or at the very least with little dynamics that way they don't compete too much with what's happening in the foreground so now I'm just going through and adding these little um, these little dashes these little texture implicators implication of texture whatever you want to call it um, and then uh, we'll go back and erase uh, the lines where they overlap right there because it's all on a different layer of course at the, this point I'm still structuring the drawing so you're going to occasionally get these little bits of separated uh, li lines on separate layers so that I have that type of control. So that little bush is getting drawn in the right and then another little bush next to that and then that tree uh, the sort of implication of some sort of a tree that's coming from off screen and the leaves are entering frame and now here's the next tree over. doing the exact same process now so we've got that tree that's in the foreground over to the left or actually that tree is technically in the, the middle ground sort of closer middle ground um, and then uh, replicating that texture that we've got there on the other trees in the background trying to make it all of course an interesting background that looks like it's complete without uh, competing with the the foreground here you can see I've brought in a little lineup of characters. There's actually a lineup that predates these where the characters have more natural proportions. They are still stylized like this, but they have more normal proportions. And at one point it was decided that we should go in a more stylized manner. So they got sort of bigger heads and little squatter bodies. And that was the version of them that I was working on that needed to then be carried over into this particular illustration. So this is a situation where I haven't drawn these characters a lot. I drew the original ones in sort of like one go, and then I drew the altered versions that are right here, and they were more or less drawn in one go. And now I'm going and trying to draw them sort of in poses and doing, uh, doing performing actions. So it's not like it's impossible, it's just not something where I've practiced these characters a lot and sort of have them automatically. It's more I'm looking at my own drawings like archaeology, like historical data. Okay, the person who drew this, which was me, drew it this way, so when they turned, I guess it's something like this. Um, there's not a whole lot of rules that are sort of set up yet, and uh, so it's a bit of a... Uh, it's not that it's guesswork, but it's, it's more... Well, this has only been drawn once before, and I've only, I've never I've only ever drawn them in this one pose. So let's ex explore how they could be posed while doing the final art. Now, if I wanted to be very very thorough with this, I suppose I could have sat with some uh, like another file and just done a bunch of exploratory sketches. Uh, but I, I felt confident enough, let's put it that way, that I could just keep going with it. Part of that's because I did I was the one who drew them before, so it's a lot of uh, my own natural inclination on how it should be done. I always like drawing this character the most. I'm not saying character names because I don't know what's changing right now and, and what's you know able to be talked about, but um, I've always liked drawing that character because he's just got this 
he's sort of shaped almost like a bullet or like those was it the pantyhose legs that like in the 80s used to come in like that little like egg shaped thing he's basically just round on top and then he's a cylinder and then you attach these other parts to him to sort of break that silhouette and give him something interesting so he's fun to draw um, as for the rest of the characters, uh, right now this is me just, I'm, I'm trying to strike a balance between them being drawn with a level of care where they are well drawn, but at the same time when we moved into this style there's also a lot of sort of flat um, graphic aspects to the way that they were drawn, so I want to have some fun with them in that way as well. So that's where you've got like the arms that are just straight out, uh, or in his case straight up, uh, to try and strike that strong sort of funny pose but um, but also by using like a lot of straight lines that aren't interrupted by smaller shapes uh, to try and keep it cartoony and a little on the flat side. This character always gives me a bit of a pain because he's the other ones are all really simple and then this guy's got like a goggles and backpack and like He's sort of like a gadgety guy, um, so he's always bringing just a little bit more complication. So while I'm trying to fly through the piece and just get it done, um, this is always the character where it's like, ah, crap. Okay, right, he's got a backpack, he's got night vision goggles, he's got glasses, you know. It's just nothing that's hard, it's just he represents a little bit more work than the other characters. Luckily here he's facing the other way, so I didn't have to draw the goggles really at all. Okay, so now we're going to move uh, to the next character, and you can see here every time I turn the layers back on and erase away the characters that are underneath, and then I'll come back in when we get to the next stage. It'll finish a little bit of that uh, foreground that's going on there and then we're gonna put the leaves from the trees and instead of drawing the leaves I wanted to keep them more of a shape to try and imply this um, it's more of a framing than a detail based thing so I went in and blotted in these uh, leaves kept them black and then eventually I changed them to a different shading uh, setting I think maybe overlay or something and you can see here I'm just sort of blocking in sort of what all of that's going to look like in the background I think it eventually gets blurred um, so anyways that's what's happening right there yeah it gets blurred and then uh, there's uh, so that way we're creating some depth there with like the trees the leaves in the background leaves a little bit closer than the trunks those uh, other trunks that get added that are all just silhouetted and they're part of the sort of bush line that's in the background there and these are all just to create some depth but by keeping them all the same color I'm not really bringing too much noise to the foreground you can also see that I have a little bit of a lighting setup there's light coming from the top left in the distance and then um, these characters are all sort of more in the woods and closer to us and now I've got the background staged 
uh, and now it's just about flatting in everything else. You can see I lowered the opacity of the uh, bush line and the tree line in the background just to bring it even further back. And now we're into the flatting process. We're full blown into the flatting process for the foreground and the uh, characters. You can see I'm doing a lot of environment work here to get that all completely squared away before I move to the characters because obviously if that's all lit in the right way then the characters have, there's a lot of information for me when I go ahead and light the characters. Again showing how little I've drawn these characters, I then bring the characters back up and I color pick directly from that in order to do the flats for the characters. They all have specific enough colors that I don't want to make it generic. I mean, I chose those original colors all for a reason, and I wanted to make sure that I was sticking to that for the flatting process. There's little things that like, you know, I don't know how they're going to end up in the final thing, but when I was doing this illustration, there are things that I wanted to absolutely keep right. I wanted to keep their individual skin tones right. I wanted to keep the colors of their ears and noses that's receiving that sort of blush correct. I wanted to keep how that one dude with the blonde hair has like that gradient there. I wanted to make sure that was true, still true. Um, there's a gradient on the dude with the dark, the darker hair with the purple shirt. Um, so there's little things like that where there were just little hallmarks of the character characters and I wanted to make sure that stayed Now uh, one other thing to note is I'm sure you noticed that the lines switched from black to like a light tan set to multiply to absorb the colors underneath um, So that's just something I do fairly often and that certainly happened here as well uh, the nice thing about the shadows here is that these characters are mostly in shadow which gives a really nice strong look as well as a uh, is easier because you're blocking in just this big blob of shadow and then you're like okay with a little bit of light on the end which is nice um, all of the shadow for all of the kids was done on the same layer and it was done with the select paint select clear method across the characters which is why you see them getting colored in a certain order they're getting colored from whomever's furthest back to whomever's closest as far as overlapping goes you can also see that there's some bounce happening from the green grass onto their eyeballs. That's just because I thought it'd be nice to communicate a little bit of material, a little bit of reflectivity there. And then that's also why we've got that gradient coming up their bodies with a little bit of knockback on those characters in the distance. Just to try and get them a little bit more in the environment. Um, and that way they just don't feel like stickers with this like one single shadow layer on them. They feel like they're actually a part of that world. So now we're working on flatting the Yeti. I keep saying Yeti, the Bigfoot. Um, and you can see I go with sort of my gut at first and then decide to change the colors around a bit. Especially as it goes, I'm, I'm looking for readability, of course. So if I make one value too dark or something maybe a little too saturated or whatever, I can always tweak that since everything's on a separate layer. I really wanted to get the depth of that mouth as well, which is why you see that gradient happening. And then a few more tr uh, tricks get brought in in order to really sell that in a minute. So now he's getting his shading using select paint, select clear, which is linked down below if you want to see the methodology that I'm referring to right there. It's a methodology that was essentially structured to color, to do a shading layer in Procreate without having to do too much, too many layer shenanigans since you have a layer limit in Procreate. So now we're going in and putting um, just basically the more detail oriented shadows here. We do some of the gradient up like we did on the kid so that he's uh, getting some of that bounce. We've got the spit and we've got the dust being kicked up by him. Um, we also duplicate the lines and slightly blur them and then just a little bit of shadow work in there to separate some of the shapes. And there we go. That's the final version of the piece. The idea was to try and do something that evoked a cartoon look but still had a little bit more finish to it and a few more things that maybe you wouldn't do in animation because it might be a little too much. Um, that way it just felt like a cartoon but it felt like a particularly polished piece of art. Here are a couple more close-up shots so you can see the kids in their final version and see the Bigfoot in his final version. So I hope you enjoyed checking this out. Uh, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy it, please consider liking and subscribing and I'll see you on the next one. 
And if you're looking for me on the internet, these are the places where you can find me.